All right. Um. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is truth. Truth. And John, uh, by the way, if you hadn't already guessed, we're in the first stage here of the order of conversion or the rational path of Christian ethics, as we call it. So uh, that means we're going to be, for the next two weeks, covering uh, the, the law of thought. As we talked about yesterday, which means rationality, logic, etc. So today we're talking about what is truth. In John chapter 18, we find Jesus, who has been arrested by the Jewish leaders, they don't have the authority to kill him, so they they have to bring him to the Roman governor Pilate. And Pilate questions Jesus, and this is some these are some of the things that they say to each other. Jesus says, "My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world." Then Pilate said to him, "So you are a king?" Jesus answered, "You say that I am a king." For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And look at what Pilate says in response to that. He says, what is truth? What is truth? If you were given that question, what is truth, how would you respond? Truth is truth. God, Jesus is, is true. He says he's the way to choose life. Yes, he does. Okay. Well, how else would you respond? And let's, let's just for a second uh, take the question very literally. When someone asks you, what is, what is truth? Correctness. Correctness. Good. No. Falsehood. The opposite of falsehood. Honesty. Honesty. Fact. Very good. Here's the textbook definition. You can write it down. That which corresponds to its object. So that's a very simple way of putting it. If something is true, you it means that it corresponds to what the claim, what claim is being made. So when Pilate went out after this conversation and went to the crowd, the mob, and said, I find no guilt in this man, that was a true statement because what he was saying corresponded to Jesus. Jesus was, in fact, innocent. So truth is that which corresponds to its object, that which describes an actual state of affairs. You could say it's telling it like it is. That's what truth is. So let's give me an example of a truth statement. Any true, Anything that's verifiably true. You guys, can you tell what this is right here? The earth. The earth? The earth is round. The earth is round? Okay. So this is just a quick example. I'd like to hear some from you as well. But a verifiable truth is the earth is round. What do I mean when I say it's verifiable? It's a proven fact. Verify it. Verify it. Correct. You can verify it, which makes it a proven fact. All right, this camera. All right, so it's a verifiable fact that the earth is round. Is this a controversial statement? Yes. Today it is, yes. Well, what's interesting about this statement <laughs> is that. Uh, this used to be the standard go-to of any teacher. If they're talking about anything that's verifiable, anything that like everybody knows but no one knew before it was discovered, right? Before the earth was discovered to be round, everybody thought it was flat. And then there were people who were kind of thinking, you know what, I think it is. And then finally it was verified. And so that's that kind of idea is a great illustration for what truth is all about. 
Sadly, today, there are many people, it's a growing number of people, who don't believe this is true. But that kind of well, proves the point anyway. anyway. But their entire thing is based on like distrust of what this, these organizations and governments say. Right. So. Exactly. So we're not going to get into the, why people believe, uh, why people choose to not believe that, but it will be a great example for us. The image on the screen is actually uh, a diagram of an experiment that was done by uh, another Greek philosopher. We talked about Greek philosophers yesterday. Remember, this is kind of a philosophy class, but there was a guy named Aristophanes who was among the philosophers who thought, you know what, I think that the earth is round. How do I prove it? And what he did was he had a, a group of people go to an obelisk or a tower down in Cyrene, or Cyrene, excuse me. And he was at a tower, I believe he was the one in Alexandria. But the point is, at the same time during the day, they measured the length of the shadows being cast by those towers. And the lengths were different. And that's how he came to realize, okay, the sun is coming at us from the same angle, but we're receiving it differently because we're on a round surface. Yes? Did you say like the sun, if the earth was flat, and the sun was out, then the whole world would be there in one time? Yeah, that's basically the idea. Well, what if it's... Wow. All right, we're not getting into all that. <laughs> the point is, since this experiment, we've verified it in other ways. Now, this is a great example of what truth is. Because oh, ever, what did everybody think before it was verified? That it was still around. Was that, it was that, flat. That those runs were crazy. No one could see it. Yeah, there, there were definitely people who claimed the earth was round for a time. Many, many years before that, everybody just assumed it was flat. Then there were a group of people who started to say, you know what, I think it's round. And then over time, it became accepted, but really only after it was verified, right? And even now, it's not fully accepted. So this is a great point about truth. If you're again, if you're looking at your worksheet here, there's three statements there below the definition that we need to understand about truth. Number one, truth is discovered, not invented. Truth is discovered, not invented. So the earth was round before anyone discovered it was round. It exists independent of anyone's knowledge of it. We don't have to know what is true for something to be true. Like God. Like God, yes. Second thing about truth. Truth is absolute. In other words, it's not affected by attitude or belief. If something is true, it's true for all people in all places at all times. Any questions about that, Sid? So yeah, if something is true, it's true for everybody. It's absolute. Third statement. Contrary beliefs are possible. Contrary truths are not possible. So when it comes to the earth as being round, it was discovered. It's not that the earth was flat and then people discovered it to be flat or round and then it suddenly became round. It was always a certain way. And we had to figure out what that way was. It's absolute, it's true for everyone. It doesn't matter what you believe about the earth, the earth is round regardless. The earth doesn't really care what you think about it, okay? And then finally, it's not possible for two contrary truths to be true. Someone may believe that it's not round, but it is. So let's give me another statement. Give me another truth statement. Maybe one that's not, it's really sad that this is controversial now, but let's let's talk maybe one that's just not controversial at all. Give me an example of a truth statement. Non-controversial. 
Shoes go on your feet. Shoes go on your feet. That's very that's well that that could be controversial. Yeah, okay. Shoes go on your feet. We need to eat. Shoes go on your hands. Okay, that's good one. We must eat in order to live. All right, is it true? Yeah. No. <laughs> All right, yes, it's true. What happens when somebody decides, you know what, I don't believe this? They die. The they die, weeks. or they give in eventually, right? We have to eat in order to live. This is an example of the truth that is universal in the sense of we all know it to be true. Okay. So there are some truths we just know because of the nature of how things are. And that's really what we need to talk about when we're talking about the, the fundamental laws of logic. So let's talk about the laws of logic there on your uh, sheet there. So go ahead and fill this out. These are things we just know because of the nature of how things are. We don't have to learn it. In fact, the truth is, the only way someone were to not believe in these fundamental laws is if they're taught to not believe in them. My point is, when you're a kid growing up, these are things you just kind of realize about the world and how it works. You'd have to be taught out of it, okay? So here they are. Number one, the law of non-contradiction. And you'll notice there it's uh, written in the form of a, an equation. I want you to copy that equation as well. The law of non-contradiction. For all propositions, which would be P, what is a proposition, by the way? Yeah, yeah any statement, any claim, okay? So a proposition is a statement or assertion that expresses an opinion or judgment. So any statement or truth claim, that's a, what P represents. For all propositions, P, it is impossible for both P and not P to be true. In other words, let me put it this way. And by the way, this squiggly line means not. Let me write that down. Okay, the dot uh, means and, and in the second we'll see one that's a V, and that means four. Okay, so it's it's just that when you're talking about logic and you want to be able to write something down succinctly, you use symbols instead of words. That's what people do. So. Don't ask me why they decided that the squiggly line means not, but we'll just, just believe me for when I say that that's what these represent. Okay. So, in other words, it is not possible for P and not P to both be true. In other words, two contradictory truths and not both, or two contradictory claims cannot both be true. Do we just know this instinctively? Yes. Yeah. We don't have to be taught this, we just know it. But it's good to be able to write it out in a succinct manner and understand it. Because there are people in our society and there are philosophies in our society that are teaching people to disregard this very simple and fundamental truth. So we need to understand, if we're gonna make any truth claims, we need to understand this first law, okay? The law of non-contradiction. The way the world works, shows us that this is true. So, uh, we'll give an example in a second. Second one, it's called the law of excluded middle. This is P or not P. P or not P, uh, that's not that right. <laughs> P or not P. You'll remember it now. 
All right, so can anybody guess what this means? What the law of excluded bill is from the title and the that it's true or it's not. something either is true or it's not. Yeah, something either is or it isn't. There is no middle ground. Okay. So let's let's apply both of these to another truth claim. All right. Two plus two equals four. Two plus two equals four. According to the law of non contradiction, somebody else could write two plus two equals five. Oh, it's been a non -truth. Sorry? It's been a non -truth. So one of these has to be right, one of them has to be wrong, right? According to the law of non-contradiction, you can't have two truth claims that contradict one another, both be true. So for example, P would be two plus two equals four, not P would be anything that says otherwise, two plus two equals five, two plus two equals six, whatever. They both, they can't both be true. And according to the law of excluded middle, it means that it's either this or it's not this. There is no middle ground. In other words, there's no special day of the year that two and two add up to a different number. There's no middle ground. It's either this or it isn't. Does that make sense? All right. So let's get some other examples out there. By the way, do you see how these are so fundamental, these two laws? We couldn't have a test in school without understanding these just on a basic level. I couldn't give you a question, let's say a true or false question or a multiple choice question. I couldn't give you a test if we didn't all understand and agree these two laws. I don't think they understand that either. Well, Sorry? But I don't think they understand or agree on this. Okay, tell me why. Who who doesn't agree with these? Oh. Get out of the test. You want it off the test. Okay. All right. Let's give a couple more examples. Christianity claims that Jesus rose from the dead. That claim is either true or it's not true. There's no middle ground. Okay. Different religions make different and contradictory claims. Some religions say, oh, this book is the holy book. Other religions say this book is the holy book. They contradict one another. Some religions say there's one God. Some religions say there's multiple.